Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and today we are going to be talking about segment relationships in circles. Um, the other lesson that we just did the other day dealt with the angles, and now we're going to be talking about segments themselves. So, here is the first example we're going to talk about, and let's take a look at what we got. It says, if two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the products of the lengths of the segments of the chords are equal. So what this is saying is if I have two chords in a circle that are intersecting, so they're not like parallel chords or anything like that, but two chords that are intersecting, then A to E times E to B will be equal to E to C times E to D. So these two parts equal multiplied equal these two parts multiplied. Technically, it's a ratio. It's a ratio of AE to ED is CE to EB. That's really what the ratio is, but we can cross multiply and this is what we end up with. It's easier, much easier to remember it this way, to say this times this equals this times that. All right. A bit of vocabulary here. A secant segment is, with, is, a, is a segment of a secant with at least one endpoint on the circle. So you kind of know that already. The, an external secant segment is a secant segment that lies in the exterior of a circle with one endpoint on the circle. So here's what an external secant segment is, like this, like this. So I'm not saying secant is technically a line that cuts through it, but now I'm just saying it's a secant segment. So we're talking about this and we're talking about that. So for the terminology, we've got one more thing to remind ourselves about. It's the tangent segment. So we know what a tangent segment is. A tangent would be a line that just touches. So if I say this is a tangent segment, I'm just talking about the segment of it. So here's the external seg segment of the secant and here's the secant segment. The whole thing is the secant segment. So this is just the same thing kind of up there, just presented a little bit differently. Let's move on to the next thing. And all this terminology helps us to understand these two theorems that we're going to talk about. The first one is the secant secant product theorem. So here's what this one is saying. It's saying if I've got these two secant segments right here, and they intersect in the exterior of a circle. So two secants intersect in the exterior of a circle. Then the product of the lengths of one of the secant segments and its external segment equals the product of the lengths of the other and its external. So here's one way to think of it. We're going to take the whole thing times the outside part, and this is equal to the whole thing times the outside part. So A to E, this whole segment, times its exterior equals, which is B to E, equals C to E times its exterior. So again, let's uh, write this out. We have the whole thing times the outside, which is this piece right here, the whole thing times the outside. So the whole times the outside part equals the whole times the outside part of the other. So I guess the next question would be, well, what if one of them was a tangent? What if both of them were tangents? Well, we've already covered one situation, and that would be if both are tangents, well, then these two segments are equal. We've already talked about that, that if you have an external point and two tangents, then these segments that are created are equal. So then we've got the next one, which is, well, what if you had a secant and a tangent? Well, then notice how we said the whole thing times the outside. Well, the whole thing is the outside over here, right? This whole thing, this whole tangent is the outside. So all I do is square it. So it's just times itself. So again, this part is the whole thing. And this is the outside. But the whole thing is the outside on the other, so I just multiply it by itself. So it's just that DC portion squared. 
All right, so now let's take a look at some example problems out of your student journal. We're going to go to page 307, 1 through 4, and we'll do these problems. All right, so here is the first example. We've only got four today um, because these aren't too bad, hopefully. So on this first one, it says find the value of x. So I've got two chords intersecting, so that means this piece times this piece equals this times this. So x times dx plus 1 will equal 6 times 5. Over here, I'll get x squared plus x equals 30. So x squared plus x minus 30 equals 0. Don't forget, whenever we have x squared, we bring it over, and we could solve for it that way. At this point, I have to try to factor this, and this equals 0. So this is going to be x and x, and factoring, you're going to end up with plus 6 minus 5, because 6 times 5 is negative 30, and 6 plus negative 5 is 1. So x equals negative 6 and 5. But I can't use negative 6 because it's a negative value, so I have to throw that one out. And so my only answer for this is x equals 5. All right, moving on to number 2. Let's take a look at what we got. And we've got same situation. We've got two chords intersecting in the inside of a circle. So it's going to be this piece times this piece equals the 15 times the 5x minus 2. So 10 times the 7x equals the 15 times the 5x minus 2. So we're just multiplying them. So I get 70x equals 15 times 5 is 75x minus 30. So we can subtract 70x from each side and add 30 to each side. So we'll get 30 equals uh, 5x. So x will be 6 again. And you can check your answer if you'd like. So 6 times 7 is 42. Um, four, and then times a 10 is 420. And then you can check on the other side. 6 times 5 is 30 minus 2, 28 and times the 15 will give you the same result. Okay, so moving on, let's do number three, and let's take a look at what we have here. And we have, this time, we have this secant. It's barely a secant. I, they, I don't like when they do that to these problems, but it's barely a secant. Um, it's not a tangent, because we could see that this piece is 1, that piece is x plus 2, this piece is x plus 3 over here, and then this piece is 2. So we need the whole thing times the outside equals the whole thing times the outside. So remember, it's the whole times the outside. That's the relationship here. So the whole thing here is going to be x plus 2 plus 1. So this will be x plus 3. This is the whole times the outside, which is x plus 2, equals the whole thing over here would be x plus 3 plus 2. So that's x plus 5. That's the whole thing. And then the outside is just 2. Okay, so taking a look at this, we're going to have to foil this out. So this is where some of you may struggle with some of these, is just remembering some of the algebra steps. So you'll end up foiling this out to get x squared plus 2x plus 3x. So that's going to be plus 5x plus the 6. You could do the work on the side to just to double check it. And then on this side, I'm going to get 2x plus 10. Bring everything over to one side. So x squared plus 3x. So I'm subtracting 2x from each side. Subtract 10 from each side. Minus 4 equals 0. Let's move this up a little bit so I have a little bit more room. And now we have to factor this. So this factors into x and x, and this is going to be plus 4 minus 1, because 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, and 4 times negative 1 adds up to be 3. Remember those factoring rules. So I get x equals negative 4 and 1. Well, I can't use a negative because I can't have this negative length over here. I can't have the negative length there. So the only answer that I can use is 1. So x has to be 1. And you can, again, double-check the result. But it'll work out. 
So moving on to the last problem, and this time I've got the tangent and the secant, so it's the outside. So the whole thing times the outside equals this part squared. So the whole thing in this case would be the x plus one, x minus one plus five. This is the whole, right? Times the outside, which is x minus one, equals this one squared. Well, let's see what happens here. I get x plus four times x minus one equals, I can go ahead and foil this one out to get x squared plus two x plus two. Oops, sorry, that's plus 1 on the end here. So let's erase that and make this plus 1. On this side, on the left side, you're going to get x squared. And we, we won't skip steps here. It'll be minus the x plus the 4x minus the 4. So you get x squared plus 3x minus the 4 equals x squared plus the 2x plus the 1. The x squareds will subtract out. Then you'll get x, if I subtract 2x from each side, and then add 4 to each side, you'll get x equals 5. And then you can plug that in and verify that it works, and it should work. Real quick, you'll get, if you, if you did plug it in to verify, you get 6 over here, squared is 36. Over here, you'll get 4. whole thing is 9 times this 4 is 36 as well. So hopefully uh, this wasn't too bad, just you're going to need to practice your algebra over here, your factoring, and your foiling. So um, that's where I think most of you will end up with a little bit of problem, uh, just remembering how to do all that. Um, but again, hopefully uh, the concept is not too difficult for you guys. All right, so thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and we'll see you in the next video.